This video is intended to help you understand relative risk. Now it's important to remember we use relative risk when we do cohort studies because in cohort studies we have a prevalence, a prevalence of disease because we, all we've done is taken a group of people and without any manipulation identified those whether they had an exposure or not and then how many of those developed disease. So we're able to conduct a relative risk analysis because it's based on prevalence. However, case control studies do not have a natural prevalence because all we've done is selected a random number of cases and a random number of control groups, uh, individuals. And so we don't have a prevalence, therefore we have to estimate it using odds ratio. It's something to remember. So in this case we're going to discuss just relative risk in this analysis. Now relative risk is the process by which we calculate or quantify the amount of risk due to an exposure. In this example, we'll show you how to calculate that relative risk. So, you're researching the effect of benzene exposure and cancer. You go to a workplace where there is a known potential for exposure to benzene. Therefore, there will be some people in this group that were exposed, but not everybody in that workplace is going to be exposed, so we'll have some people here in the non-exposed group. There are 843 people in the work center. However, only 212 are exposed to benzene in their work duties. You also know that 12% of the work center employees eventually contract cancer. That's a high number, but it's used here uh, for purposes of analysis. Um, I'm not sure that you'd normally see 12% of a work center uh, contracting cancer. Your discovery finds that 40 people with cancer were in your exposure group. So the first thing we need to do is identify what we have here in our story problem that we can just input into our 2x2 two two table that's been labeled with those who have cancer, those who don't, and then the, the totals of these rows each, and also those who have been exposed and those who have not been exposed, and then the totals of each of these columns as well. So we'll take that one step at a time. The first thing we're going to know is that there were 483 people in the work center. So we're going to put that down here in the bottom corner because that's going to tell us everybody that was there at the work center. Further, there were 212 that were exposed to benzene in their work center. So this group, all the way across, whether they had disease or not, equaled 212 people. Now if we take 483 out the work center and subtract those that were exposed, we'll know the number that were not exposed. So 483 minus 212 gives us 271 people. Now we know how many people were in the exposed group and how many were in the unexposed group. Now we just need to deal with how many of those had disease or did not. Now we're going to deal with this 12% of the work center. So that's everyone who was at the place. Um, if we take 12%.12 and multiply that by 483, we get a total of 58, or just short of 58, we round up, 58 people who had the disease. Because there was 483 people, 58 had the disease, we can assume a number that did not have the disease. And we take that by taking 483 minus 58, and that's going to be 425. We don't need that necessarily in relative risk because we're taking the amount of people <coughs> who have the disease out of the total group. So we don't always need the no disease, but it's helpful to have that filled in. Out of those 58 people that have the disease, you discover your discovery finds that 40 people with cancer were in the exposure group. So of these 58 people with cancer, 40 were in the exposure group. That leaves 18 who were not in the exposure group. And when we fill in the rest of the table, we get 172 here, and we have 271 minus 18, and that gives us 253 here. 
So now we've conducted or filled in our 2x2 two two table. And the 2x2 two two table is represented here in this, this group of people, 2x2. Two two. These just help us um, with our totals, giving us our, our ancillary information so that we can calculate what's inside the box. Now relative risk is the risk of disease in the exposed all over the risk of disease in the unexposed. So if we calculate the risk of disease in the exposed, there's 40 people out of the 212 exposed group. And we take 40 divided by 212 and that equals 18.87 percent. Um, That's our risk of disease in the exposed group. Our risk in the disease in the unexposed groups takes the 18 over 271. 18 divided by 271 and that gives us 6 point six four percent. Now relative risk is just the ratio of those two things. So if we then just put a line here we get point and we always do a point and um, we move it back with we don't leave it at the rate we move the decimal place back to the original one eight eight seven divided by point zero six six four and that's going to give us a number of two point eight two now what does two point eight two mean remember in our reading that a number greater than one means that there is a potential cause of disease now we can further discuss how much more risk there is because this is a ratio. If, those, if the risk in the exposed was the same as the risk in the unexposed, then, your ratio, then this relative risk would be 1, which means there would be really no difference between the exposed group and the unexposed group. However, there's twice as much disease in the exposed group as there is in the unexposed group. In fact, it's almost three times as much. And so we can um, articulate or interpret this risk number, this relative risk, we can say that if you are exposed to the disease or benzene, you are 2.82 times more likely to get cancer than if you were not exposed to benzene.